a lot of Bitcoiners are talking about backing Vivek Ramaswamy and putting all their political capital, including money, fundraising, and airtime behind his candidacy. But let's analyze why that's a bad strategic move. First, we're going to compare him to the front runner, Donald Trump, and then also compare him to the other potential front runner, Ron DeSantis. So first off, what makes Vivek so different? The crypto community, the Bitcoin community will claim that he is the most pro-Bitcoin candidate. But is he really? Okay, so Vivek obviously understands what Bitcoin is, what it does, and he's stated that he will be accepting Bitcoin over the Lightning Network for his presidential campaign. That's great. But when we compare that to someone like Donald Trump, Donald Trump has said negative things about Bitcoin in the past. A lot of people don't understand why that makes sense. But of course, as a sitting U.S. president, your main goal is to support the U.S. dollar because that's a geopolitical tool for you, even though us Americans, by and large, do not like what the Federal Reserve does. However, Donald Trump does have substantial Ethereum holdings, uh, about a quarter million dollars. Now, obviously, that's not Bitcoin, but we know one thing about Donald Trump. He cares a lot about money. He's a business guy, which almost by definition means he's going to be incredibly committed to the crypto web three blockchain whatever term you want to use space and making sure innovation goes forward so if you're going to claim that vivek ramaswamy is a more crypto friendly candidate it might be hard to do so now you can also argue that vivek will be better at explaining what bitcoin does and what the implications are that doesn't necessarily matter why doesn't that matter because when you're running for president, the biggest thing that you have to consider when you actually are president is political maneuvering and political power. What's interesting is there is definitely an ideological divide between Vivek and the Bitcoin community. A lot of Bitcoiners are normally anarcho-capitalists or self-described libertarians. Vivek, however, even though he has garnered their support, comes from a very, what I would call, authoritarian approach. Vivek is said openly and publicly that his main form of rule is going to be by executive order, which is neither good nor bad. And there's actually a lot of different strategies about why executive order, executive orders in general can be incredibly politically effective in the short term and used as a strategy to gain long term advantages. In fact, when Trump first got into office, that is one of the main reasons he issued tons of executive orders. However, where Trump still beats Vivek is Trump has four years of experience being a president. He understands the DC dynamic. He came as an outsider. And if you're looking at electability, funny enough, Vivek is trying to actually run to the right of Trump in some ways. Uh, Vivek has clearly stated on you know being very anti-woke, but he's gone even further by saying we need to raise the voting age to 25. Okay, that's going to cause some issues. He has very similar Trump-esque stances when it comes to the environment and woke ideologies. And in fact, on the socially conservative front, uh, he is a lot like DeSantis. In fact, claiming that DeSantis has stolen a lot of his political plays out of his political book. But if you're looking at a candidate to be effective in pushing your agenda and effectively governing, Vivek is still just a businessman. He has zero political experience. Compare that to a Trump or even a DeSantis. DeSantis has actually passed bills. He has actually passed legislation. It's one thing to create a talking point and be an influencer and a media personality, which Vivek is very good at, and so is Trump. It is a completely different thing to govern. Now, Vivek's point is you can only be an outsider once. And so his claim is that Trump is no longer an outsider. Vivek himself will be the new outsider. However, there are some problems there. The biggest problem being that a lot of people, frankly, believe that Trump was cheated. And because they have that belief, they don't believe he actually lost the election. That makes Trump's arc and Trump's story far more compelling than Vivek's. Vivek, who has been very pro-Trump, which is a very interesting strategy, because the other irony is if you're supporting Vivek, you really are supporting Trump 2.0, which is funny because a lot of these Bitcoin people didn't support Trump in 2016. And I'm not even entirely sure if they supported him in 2020. And to this day, they often try to stay away from him. But Vivek is, in some sense, just a more radical version of Trump. And you see that in his social issues. Trump, you could say, is even left of Vivek on certain social issues. So if you're trying to be strategic in the short term, Vivek has no chance of overturning Trump's lead. Vivek uh, will simply have a good chance of being second place. 
And in fact, Vivek has still not really full on attacked Trump. Uh, he's been very pro Trump, which has actually made him incredibly different from the rest of the presidential candidates. And I think if Trump doesn't show up to debate, will make make him very favorable during the presidential debate because he can essentially espouse Trump talking points the entire time, uh, which will look good for Vivek in that base. However, Trump still has over a 20 percentage lead on Vivek. So you're having to ask yourself as a Bitcoiner, why are you spending your money on a Vivek? Why not just donate it to Donald Trump? Why not just donate it to the front runner? Why are you going to waste political capital on someone who very likely will not win? Of course, you can speak early. You can talk about momentum. You can talk about the arc of history and stories and that Vivek could come out in first place and that the debates might help them. I highly doubt that's true. Trump not only has his base, which will not move, and we've seen that floor not move, which means Vivek has to pull from, say, DeSantis supporters or from other supporters, which even if you combine all the other presidential uh, Republican primary candidates votes together, they still do not beat Trump. Vivek has to branch outside of that base, which is going to be very hard to do, given the fact that he's still running to the right of Trump. So that leaves out uh Mike Pence supporters, Chris Christie supporters, Nikki Haley supporters, uh, especially when it comes to, once again, social issues. So your political capital would be far better well spent simply if you were to just donate it to Donald Trump and start earning favors with him. And that's only to say if you've completely decided that you're not going to go on a Biden ticket. And don't even get me started on donating to RFK's campaign. That is definitely just another way to throw your money in the garbage as well as your political capital. All of this, of course, is specifically focused on, however, if we are looking at someone actually running for president. There's an, always an argument to be made that if you are donating to a political campaign, even if it's presidential, that it's not just about them running for president. The argument I want to make that is for Vivek is that he's young, he's ambitious, and that he has a long career in front of him. And he's going to remember the people who, who supported him early on, much like a DeSantis would. DeSantis is also very young. The key difference, once again, being DeSantis and Trump actually have experience governing. Vivek is just a rich millionaire, multimillionaire, uh, who says a lot of good things and certainly is going to be politically influential, but has no idea what Congress is like. He's never even governed a state. He hasn't even governed a county, a city. So although you can say he's a successful business owner, one argument to be made is that what made Trump partly ineffective during his first term was having to gain all the political experience and the political knowledge that comes with being president all of a sudden. Vivek will simply be reliving those experiences. Now, once again, if your goal is for Vivek maybe to end up in a Trump or DeSantis cabinet and that's the angle you're taking, yes, maybe a donation to him would be a good idea. But the end, at the end of the day, your money would be better well spent in a Trump or DeSantis-like candidacy, because those two not only have the experience, but are far more likely to win. All you have to do is look at the political momentum. Vivek's time will certainly wane out. He will most likely be replaced by DeSantis come January when Florida's uh, when Florida's legislative session starts and DeSantis really starts gaining more media attention through that. As long as these indictments keep hitting Trump and he stays in the media cycle and he has that kind of ethos of revenge, he's going to maintain the top dog. So if you're a Bitcoiner, seriously think about it. You would be much better off giving money to a mainline candidate like Donald Trump instead of wasting your money on a Vivek. And that won't change. And so although I'm probably preaching to the choir and a lot of Bitcoiners who have a penchant for losing in presidential races, I know a lot of them supported Gary Johnson back in 2016 and probably were hoping once again for a third party ticket in 2020. If you want to be realistic about your options and you want to make actual political headway and political influence, I would stay away from someone like Vivek and I would might as well support someone like a Ron DeSantis or a Donald Trump.